Dear Diary, the 19th of January 2018. The last video I did was um, on January the 8th, and the next day I had quite a major thing happen in the old meditation. And um, that was my birthday, and it was an awesome birthday present from God. And it really, it definitely made me feel that this was the land of milk and honey. Okay, so it's, it's different from what I've been feeling in my soul, like the whole time I've been meditating, it's to reach my heart of my soul and feel those connections with God and with others and with myself and healing the soul and stuff like that. So this was completely different. I had just listened to David Vo's his um, second part video, so the one that was uploaded that day or the day before. And he's talking about the, the living waters and how the galaxies, the spiral arms of the living waters or whatever. But that this sort of manifests in our bodies through our spine. And um, I've never really, during meditation, I've never really felt that much in the spine or the back. It's usually been more in the middle or at, at the front and above and below and everything else. But, yeah, the back hasn't really come into play and I started to get the feeling that right in the center of my back is is like where the cord is is where the cord that connects the soul to the spirit body and spirit body to the physical body and what happened I so I'd been so I have this sort of, you know, I've been dealing with this pain in my feet, which is not getting much anymore. I don't know, probably more will come. But then after the feeling the pain had moved from the feet, it would, I was getting a lot of stuff going around the back. And, you know, it wasn't that bad. Sometimes it was nice and sometimes it was getting a bit samey. Like when it's getting a bit samey, it's like I'm not... It's not in motion, I'm not figuring out how to to operate this or or whether I should just, you know, most of the time the answer is just to let go and let it happen anyway. So I was thinking about my spine being the living waters and I suppose I got into the habit of hunching forward a bit. So I sat up straight and then the, 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 the pain I was feeling in, in the back and stuff and in the, right in the centre of the back did go up to the base of my neck and it, it happened quite fluidly and then you know the, the thing that was in my mind of the David Vose video it will go up and then it will die for three days or something and then something will happen well it went up into the base of my neck and because I've got a nice decalcified pineal gland, I haven't had hardly any fluoride for many years. And something happened, like right in the middle of my brain, it felt like, and it was just this white loveliness. And and then I sort of got a twinge in my ribs, say, and I allowed to feel, and then, and then it was like coming out, it was in in like sort of globules. It, it's hard to describe, but like white with a glowy edge, and that was like the milk and honey bit. Just seemed to describe it quite well. Um, Yeah, and it lasted about five minutes, probably. 
and um, just so nice. Um, but it was different, so it's like it was. So it's not. I think it's something going on in the physical body somehow, even though that bit seemed to arch out, and it was. But it's something to do with the toroidal toroidal shape as well. So there's and I, I haven't been able to um, reproduce it fully. Um, although last night, I I got the bit in the centre of my head and it was lovely, but I didn't get these bits sort of coming out. So whether that's you know because the first time there was lots of it to come out and maybe that takes time to to build up again and I did feel I did feel changed afterwards I mean I recently I just feel like I'm ch changing and um, something is you know this word transformation is seems quite apt for what's going on Um, and then, so, and then the, a week later, six days later, January the 15th, um, I got another new, new feeling, and this to do with the soulmate. And, so like I've been saying, um, with the heart stuff, to let go and, and things just work. And so with the soulmate, it's like God. The soulmate is always there. It's it's not something you have to try and get to. It's more about breaking down the barriers that are blocking what is there for you. So your soulmate is there. And the connection seemed to be quite low down. Probably the navel, actually, thinking about it. Interesting. And like a, and like a, so there's like a, a, a line coming out, and it connects to my soulmate. But what, what I suddenly felt then was, the love coming back, and, wow, um, this is, this is something, amazing that. Um, shows showed me at that point how how big a thing the soulmate connection is they're not sexual in any way it's just like oh yeah because i was listening to um beatles long and winding road and brings me back to you sort of thing and it it's it, it just felt so true and that's why i got that connection felt love coming back up from my soulmate and sending love back and yeah just just really really amazing stuff so and it's made me think about when I first started out on this how um, the song from the St. Francis film is it Small Beginnings greater ends you know that was part of the motivation that got me to stick with this um, journey because in, in the beginning there were it was just small little things but you know it's built up and and so there we go within a week two sort of major new things and I've been um, sitting on the floor with, without a pillow, without anything. I'm wondering if it's a little bit masochistic. But sometimes when I'm in the mood, uh, you know, doesn't hurt at all. Haven't got any pain when I get up. But then sometimes I sit down and my ankle's a bit rough and I think, yeah. <laughs> pillow and slippers, so nice thick pair of slippers and a pillow now and then um, just so I'm not being masochistic but yeah something about just straight on the floor I don't know 
I don't know. More, more to uh, to play with. Okay, uh, just a quick thing uh, I've got written down here. Carbon. Carbon is six six six. Interestingly, um, you know everything's every living thing has carbon in it. It's probably the third biggest element after hydrogen and oxygen because that's water and all living things have water so the next thing is carbon I mean carbon is just the built the building blocks of, of life in it, physical life but it's 666 interesting and um, it's 666 in the sense that it's got six protons six neutrons and six electrons And in a way, I'm going to come on to this in a minute. So how how you know how is the beast everything physical? It's interesting, interesting to think about that. Um, right, we we all all people have the same drive to become happier. Deep down, that's what we all want. We all want to be happier now and forever. That's what we want. And anything you do physically will make you less happy in the end, in the long run. Uh, you know, probably the least, I mean, like talking, making a video. It, it is, okay? <laughs> it's, hard, it's, it's not easy to think about it. I think, well, what's the point? Yeah, exactly, right. What's the point? Why, why do we even have a physical life then if physical life is just going to make us less happy? And the, the answer is because we're here to learn. And you only, in a sense, learn by making a mistake. So everything you do is there to teach you something. Take, all right, take cleaning your house. During the time when you're cleaning, that can be quite enjoyable actually, you know, and then the finished result is enjoyable, so you make the, well that makes me happier then, but then over the next days, you know, maybe other people are messing it up, so you're having a go at them, and, you know, dust is gradually building up, and you start noticing it, and then you think, well, you know, I'm going to have to clean again. So the end result is less happy. I mean, you know, then you, you've spent a lifetime cleaning your house, having a go at people about messing it up, watching it get dirtier, and then having to clean it again. So it's all... Um, and Okay, so then you buy some new furniture. It's all sort of just escapism in a way you know it's like it's like you've got control over your surroundings but does it really matter is it really the big thing so in the end you can see that even though that sounds completely ridiculous, anything you do physically will make you less happy, it's kind of true. And I got this understanding when I was just completely in, in the heart, with love, with God, <clears throat> you know, that's, that, my, my, my pain in a sense is, is what's stopping me from being like that all the time and um, 
and I do have a son as well, so that's some responsibilities. But eventually, that's what we'll be doing. We won't be having a physical life. We won't be needing a physical life. Because we want to be happier now and forever. And that's all in our eternal soul. People are driven to be more happy. That's what drives us all. That's what we're all looking for. So everything you do, you're doing it trying to get more happy. Then eventually you'll realise, this doesn't make me more happy. Voila, you've learnt something. But then you're going to need to look for the next thing to make you happy. And this is why people are so, you know, when we're children and growing up, it's why we're so quite content in our ignorance, because we don't know this. But gradually it dawns on us, you know. And um, you can start to see it in people that, you know, they do know, but they don't know. <laughs> Weird. Okay, you've been listening to AJ Miller's videos. Listen probably now to the middle third, there all these videos about forgiveness and repentance and yes there is a heck of a lot of waffle but this is the way they do things, they like to be thorough um, so they're saying you know there's talking quite a bit about like most of the stuff they're saying is okay some of it quite good, some of it quite helpful <laughs> Um, but they're talking about this no such thing as accidental sin or they're talking about accidental sin and intentional sin and intentional sin is so much worse and accidental sin and then AJ sort of argues, well it's not really an accident you know so in a sense I'd say there's actually no such thing as intentional sin in that once you know 100% that this thing you're about to do is going to hurt you, once you know 100% you're not going to do it anymore. So obviously people who seem to be doing it intentionally are not. Because because, yeah, you'd still be thinking there's, like, when I smoke cigarettes, I'm, I'm still not 100% convinced that it is bad for me, that it is causing me pain. I haven't actually felt the direct correlation between the smoke in a fag and the pain yet. It's something I have to come to. I can I can theor theorize that it definitely is, but that's still just me theorizing. Me fully, hundred percent. I don't know that yet because yeah, I'm not there yet. I still think there may be some reason why I do need to smoke. So that's just where I am. Right, better than others. Better than others. Uh, I guess it was probably listening to AJ's videos that um, made me understand that this is something I had in me. And I think it's something that maybe not everybody, but a large proportion of people have. And, you know, how many people, you know, rave about their family and yeah? they you know oh, family's brilliant and you know especially the parents of the kids they'll be like this family is the best you know it's all it's all got passed down from generations to generations now there are probably some families who say you know we're not the best we serve these people we're their servants and da 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 but the sin here is seeing anyone else as better or worse than you, uh, both, both sin. 
And I think that most people on the planet believe that some people are better than them and that some people are worse than them. And, and this is totally wrong. Um, we're all equal in the eyes of God and on our soul. And I, you know, there are people in my life that I had thought about and I just didn't like them. I just didn't like them. You know, and I definitely thought I was better. I mean, I grew up thinking I was better than everyone. I know I've mentioned this before. Um, and so then it's, but it's something that so many people have. Um, you know, you can make friends that way and you might be a bit competitive with each other. But I think all people want to be better. That's something they want. They want to get better. They want to be better. And, um, yeah. Mm. And it's actually really nice when you, when you just feel, no, you know, it's, we're all, we're all equal in the eyes of God. And then it, if I think of someone who's maybe, I think they're ugly and fat and they don't, you know, they don't seem to have any decent qualities or whatever. And then I, reaching them on the soul level, it's like, well, their soul is almost like, you know, someone had to play this part. It would have been nice to be someone, you know, who's good looking and athletic and, 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 and clever and, you know, but someone had to go in and play that part and that's, it's noble. The, the nobility of that soul. So we're, we're just all different. We're just all different. <coughs> so I thought of a little mantra. I exist, you exist. We are different entities. Anything you do physically will make you less happy. You want to be happier, now and forever. Sit and breathe only. Allow energies in motion. Allow emotion. And I like that's what AJ said. Energies in motion. Emotion. It's very good. I like that. Okay, so that was that. Um, I'm just having a little bit of difficulty at the moment trying to get over how how no one else sees that Adam is Yahweh. It's, it's slightly bothering me how the, no one's ever seen it. It's crazy. I mean, I think the first time I read the Bible and I went over that Genesis 2 bit Genesis 2, 3, 4, and just thinking, whoa, weird, you know. Um, and then I read it, you know, more recently, and I was starting to think, well, yeah, it's okay, so God cursed Cain with the green eyes and the, won't get the wealth from the ground, and, but it'll be, if he's hurt, it'll be event sevenfold. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see how God would have done that. Mm. So, yeah, so even myself, I was thinking that was God. But if you just think about the bit where Cain and Abel were bringing their offerings to the Lord God, <clears throat> as, you know, the first Genesis 1 just calls it God, and that's, we know that word is Elohim, and then Genesis 2, 3, call it Lord God, and late, bit later on Genesis 5 or 6, it says the Lord will now be known as the name YHVH, no, -H, Yodva, or Yahweh, or Jehovah. And so we've got these different names, and in Genesis 4, it's just, now it's just Lord, 
most of the time, and then now and then they say God as well. It just seems to be a bit of mixing up after that. So there's, there's the confusion. But when Cain and Abel bring their offerings to Lord God, I mean, come on, it's Adam. Where is Adam at that point? You know, we just imagine that he's just, you know, with Eve, hunking around. He's not. Feels responsible for his children. Of course he does. Of course he must do. Feels responsible. And all descendants then came from Adam and Eve. So he considers all of them his. He consider, as far as he's concerned, God gave him the world to look after. He named all the animals. All of that was on him. So of course he's going to be there. He didn't just disappear. Still going to be there, like, number one. So I just find it bizarre that no one else can see this. And this, the thing is this, is, this is responsible for so much of the loss of truth in the world because you've got three the three major faiths in the world islam judaism christianity all based on this all thinking that this was god who discarded the cain's offering of the actually the righteous grain which is what we've been told is our food and delighted in the in the the offering of a goat an animal So just, it's um, it's something, you know. I find this forgiveness is is good because if it's um, there's a lot of things that I haven't forgiven that are kind of well, they're hard to find in a sense, you know, like just so many different aspects. Like, but if anything makes me a little bit cross like that or resentful then I know I am harbouring something. So it's, it's quite a good clue. Um, and uh, so, you know, things like that are an opportunity to find something to forgive and therefore reduce my pain. And um, that is happening and feels good. So, yeah, that's it. Ciao for now.